What's up YouTube, it's Robert Hall, and in today's video, we're gonna go over the Profoto B1 8600 Pro and the Braun Color Ceros L, and put them into a head-to-head -head competition, see which one comes out on top. So back in 2016, I made a video about the Profoto B1 versus the Godox 8600. That video was really popular, but since then, Profoto has kind of refreshed the B1 in the B1X, and Godox has refreshed the 8600 in the 8600 Pro. And Broncolor joined the game by releasing the Ceros 800L. So we're putting all three head to head so that you guys can decide which one's most deserving of your money. So guys, buckle up. This is gonna be a long video because it's filled with a ton of information on these three lights. So first off, we gotta talk about power. Profoto B1, 500 watt second strobe, 8600 Pro, 600 watt second strobe, and the Ceros 800L is an 800 watt second strobe. So onto the results. P.S. All this information is available, link in the description as well, if you want to take a closer look at all of these results. So the Ceros meter the most powerful, which is no surprise given that it's 800 watts, and you'd expect about maybe a third stop more than the 8600 Pro. Nope, it put out a full stop more than the 8600 Pro. And the Profoto B1X was about 1.6 stops lower than the brown color Ceros. So the Ceros is definitely the best choice if you're looking for the most light output. So all three of these lights market a nine stop power range. The Profoto and the Braun Color both had over nine stops and the Godox 8600 just came a little bit short at like 8.8 .8 stops, but really close to their marketed power range. So this is great because sometimes you want the lights to have a very small amount of power and all three are capable of that as well. And in terms of power stability, these were barely flexing at all. Occasionally these would move like 0.1 stop in either direction, but they were all extremely stable even at their lower power ranges. When you get up into the higher ranges, they weren't budging at all. I mean, it was really impressive how stable all of these were for power. The Godox can only be controlled in third stop increments. The Braun Color and the Profoto can be controlled in 10th stop increments, so you can be a little bit more precise with your lighting using either of those two. Now one of the main reasons you're probably considering these lights is because you want them to be able to perform in the brightest conditions. And to do that and really take control of your aperture, then you need something like high speed sync. So before I discuss this, let me explain high speed sync versus HS. So when the shutter is moving fast, it's only exposing the sensor a little bit at a time. High speed sync extends the flash pulse as the sensor is being exposed to light through that whole process rather than just an instant moment. By stretching that duration, the peak brightness is decreased, so it's expected that you'll lose some light output. High sync is a process of alterating when the flash fires in relation to the shutter. By modifying it, you can squeeze as much flash as possible into that narrow opening. Since high sync doesn't extend the duration of the flash, it doesn't lose any power. It also requires a longer flash duration, so it works best at higher powers on an IGBT strobe. And even when it's fully optimized, high sync can still deliver a light gradient, so a gradient across the image, and that's because the entire sensor is not being exposed to the same value of flash. In short, HSS has visual consistency at the cost of reduced power, and HS loses no power but doesn't have the visual consistency and HiSync, HyperSync HS, and SuperSync are all just proprietary versions of the same technology. Now that I've explained that, the Profoto B1X and the 8600 Pro both have HSS. The Braun Color Ceros, however, only has HS. So I use the Sekonic L858DU, and one of the great features about it is that this can meter HSS. The question I wanted to answer is how much power do these lose by going into high speed sync? So I tested them and the 8600 Pro loses just under a full stop of power when entering high speed sync. The Profoto B1X however lost a whopping 3.2 stops of power. The B1X is already the lowest output out of these three lights. So with this additional power loss, it means it's the least effective light if you're trying to use HSS in bright conditions. So another new capability of this meter is that you can measure flash durations at any time duration that you want, whether you want T5 flash durations or T.1 flash durations, you can measure that with this new meter. So I always hate when companies promote the flash durations of their products in T.5 flash durations. They just aren't a useful figure for freezing motion. If you don't know, T.5 flash duration means the time it takes for the flash to go from peak power to 50% power. But at 50% power, you're still illuminating the scene, not freezing motion. 
A much more accurate figure is T.1 flash durations. That's the time it takes from the light to go to full power to 10% power, or more than three stops less power. That figure can actually tell you when you're capable of freezing motion. I've always been suspicious of Godex's T.1 flash durations. They put them right there on the side of the strobe. But are they accurate or just marketing hype? So I ran all three lights through a meter test so that I could find out what their real flash durations were. So next up is recycle time. I found all three units to be really accurate in terms of what they market as their recycle time and what they actually do. So the Ceros recycles full power in 2.7 seconds, Profoto B1X recycles in 1.9 seconds for full power, and the 8600 Pro recycles in 0.9 seconds. The 8600 Pro is the clear winner here. Even when I drop the Ceros down a full stop to kind of match the light output of the 8600 Pro, the Pro is just faster at recycling. Now the Godox does have a limit of 100 full power flashes before its thermal protection kicks in, or 50 full power high speed sync flashes. The Pro Photo and the Brown Color don't seem susceptible to any thermal protection, so I'm assuming they're only limited by their batteries. Now I wanted to test more than just full power, so I also did a 10 frames per second test. Never have I had the need to shoot at 10 frames per second, but you might. So I went through to find out which power level I could continuously fire 10 frames per second for an extended burst at. We're talking like over 15 images in a row and the light had to keep up. The Pro Photo and the Godox were both capable of firing at 1 16th power, which is 6.0 on the Pro Photo. The Ceros had to be on setting five in order to keep up, which is 1 32nd power. But again, going back to light output, that's basically the same thing as the other two. Now if you upped it one stop for all of them, they could sustain a couple images, but they would quickly fall behind. The B1X is capable of 325 full power flashes, and it'll recharge that battery in an hour and a half. 8600 Pro will give you 360 full power flashes, but it takes about two hours to recharge a battery. Lastly, the 800L will give you 220 full power flashes. It's also the fastest at recharging. It'll recharge an empty battery to full in one hour and 15 minutes. Now when hearing that you might think that the brown color is the worst performer, but it's actually the best. Again guys, we gotta look at equivalent light outputs. If you brought the Ceros down to the Godox's full power, then you would get over 440 full power flashes from the brown color Ceros. So next up we gotta talk about the color accuracy of each of these lights. I don't have a color meter, so my test consisted of shooting a white wall and then correcting them for a neutral in Lightroom and seeing how much variance there was between each shot. All three lights experienced a 150 degree Kelvin shift. Now I did use a color picker, which uses 50 degree intervals. So maybe if you were using a color meter, you could expect a little bit of an expansion on that color shift. Regardless, in their color stable modes, all three of these lights are really, really consistent across their entire power range. If you do want to be more scientific about this, there is a test that was done in China that shows the color temperatures. In their test, they found that the Pro Photo was slightly behind the Braun color and then the Godox. I've got that linked in the description if you want to check it out after this video. Now, when you flip to HSS, color is still just as important. Strobes can experience widely different colors in high-speed sync because you're changing the function of the flash to extend the burst. So in high-speed sync, the 8600 Pro did have a 450 degree Kelvin shift. It did require a little bit of a tint correction too, about negative nine, so it had a tiny bit of a magenta cast. The B1X only had a 300 degree Kelvin shift, but it had anywhere from negative 30 to negative 50 tint to get a neutral file. Again, the brown color doesn't have high speed sync, it has HS, and since that doesn't change the properties of the flash, you're not gonna experience such a dramatic shift in colors. TTL, Photo has it, Godox has it, brown color doesn't. Next up, let's address the build quality. The Ceros is an absolute tank, and at 9.5 pounds, it should be. The only part that isn't completely solid on it is the fan vents, and those are still pretty heavily reinforced. The only odd thing about the design is that the big control knob on the back still extends out further than the back of the protective bumper on the outer edge. So if it falls over onto its back, then it's gonna hit that control knob first, which could be a problem. The Pro Photo is not quite as robust, but it's still really, really strong and well built. And they recessed both ends of the light. The front bulb is recessed into the front and completely protected, and the rear panel, all the controls and the display are protected as well, and they don't sit outside of the protective outer edge. And while it offers great protection, I still really criticize Pro Photo for that decision to recess that front bulb, because it's simply not omnidirectional. This means that the spread of light is not going to be as wide as the omnidirectional bulb offered by Broncolor and Godox. 
So the brown color and the Godox are going to be way more effective at distributing light to the outer walls of a modifier. Let's talk about the build quality of the Godox 8600 Pro. It feels solid, it feels well built, and it feels pretty durable. And while the bulb is omnidirectional just like the brown color, if you have the reflector on, it's completely protected. But one thing I don't like is the display being on the side of the unit. First off, you don't use this display too much. But if it were to fall on its side, it offers the least amount of protection out of all three of these flashes. Trust me, I've smashed a few 8200s now. In the arms of the angel, fly. Having the display on the outside of the unit completely exposed is just asking to get destroyed. Even a very minor fall can smash up that display and make your device pretty much useless or at a minimum really difficult to communicate with. The 8600 Pro is also over 7 pounds and the Photo B1X has a little bit better of a build quality despite the fact that it's still lighter at 6 and a quarter pounds. Now I don't know of many people who plan on relying on these but we'll talk about the modeling lamps anyways. The Pro Photo and the brown color both have tungsten colored LEDs. The Godox has a daylight balanced LED and it's also the brightest of the three. You can focus the Pro Photo LED and it does have the nicest pattern of light. I don't feel like there's too much to talk about here. I feel all three of the LEDs on these pretty much towed the line of being maybe useful if you're using them indoors at a really close distance and pretty much pointless outdoors. Next we gotta talk about triggering these devices because that's what you're touching the most when you're using these lights. The X-Pro from Godox has a really large display, it has controls of pretty much every function of the light from the trigger, and it supports up to five groups. My only criticism is that it's a little tough to see in daylight. One primary advantage of the Godox trigger is that you always see your power setting. The brown color in the Pro Photo only briefly let you see the adjustment you're making, but you don't get any communication back as to what your power ends up at. The Pro Photo Air Remote is definitely the best for reading outdoors. The whole display is dark with bright white letters, it's just really good for visibility. It'll also trigger anything in the Air series. It's pretty limited in that it will only trigger up to three groups of lights, A, B, and C. It's also only available for Canon, Sony, and Nikon, so it's missing out on a lot of market out there. However, I do feel like it was the most simple and intuitive trigger of the three. The brown color uses the RFS 2.2, which is a very familiar body in that it shares the same exterior as the Godox X1. Brown color actually worked directly with Godox in making the HS work on the Ceros. And despite their similarities, they are different on the inside and they won't trigger one another. Now the brown color is capable of triggering and controlling up to 40 different lamps. But I also felt that it was the slowest to control. You just can't float between groups of lights like you can on the other two. I think they're much more focused on their brown control app and like Wi-Fi and controlling all those lights, which the brown color class of lights are really designed for like high-end commercial work. So having a large display to control all the lights might work better in those type of environments. But I think they could do a little bit better if they want this light to appeal to run and gun users. Let's look at the system surrounding these products because it's not just about the specs of a lighting product. You want to know what you're buying into for any changes you might make in the future. So both bro, I almost called it bro photo. Brown color and pro photo both offer pack and head systems and higher end lights that are just a completely different class than what Godox offers. If you look at things like the Pro Photo B4 system or the Bron Color Scoros, it, it's just a whole different class of lighting designed for a different type of photographer. Now, Godox does make decent studio strobes and they do have a really good lineup of portable lights for on the go photographers. And hybrid strobes like the really popular 8200 work flawlessly with the 8600 Pro. It's interesting that these lights meet here because this is kind of Godox's flagship lighting and then Brown Color and Pro Photo are like, okay, well, we'll make something in that price range for you guys. The point is you have to look at where your work is headed before you invest in one of these because you want to make sure that your lights of the future are going to be compatible with the products you already own. So I'm not going to say any one of these three has the best system because it's going to depend based on the photographer and your style of work. So what about compatibility with gels and modifiers? For the most part, there's no point to discussing modifiers. Bron Color offers amazing $3,000 softboxes and Godox offers $30 softboxes. For right now, I can take this Godox and I can put it in a Para 88, a $3,000 softbox. Alternatively, I can take the Ceros and put it in the jankiest eBay softbox ever made. All three of these use a very popular mount that other companies make products for, so your choice of modifiers is essentially endless for each. In terms of size, in terms of style, in terms of cost and quality, you can get whatever you want for any of these. But 
Profoto's mount offers focusing. You can focus any softbox, which just steps up the level of control. Also, they have the OCF gels and OCF grids, which are great for attaching directly to the flash head without any reflector or modifier or adapter. You don't need tape, you don't need Velcro, you don't need anything. You just attach them and you go on your merry way with your color corrected flash. So although you have pretty much endless options with any of these, I think the Pro Photo's got it figured out best. Next, let's talk about servicing these lights and using them globally. Godox is only in its third year of being a very recognizable lighting brand. And really it's still confusing considering they have a different name depending on what continent you're on. One of the biggest perks of choosing Pro Photo or Bron Color is that no matter where you go to work in the world, it's likely that the nearest place that you can rent gear is either carrying Bron Color or Pro Photo lighting. So if you are regularly traveling for work and you need to rent, then it's best that you're familiar at home with a Pro Photo or Bron Color system. All right, we're getting there. We just got to talk about the price and value of each flash. 8600 Pro comes in just under $900 with a $70 remote. A single Pro Photo B1X is $2,095 and their Air Remote is $419. Lastly, the Bron Color Cirrus is $2,237 and the Remote, the RFS 2.2, is $112. So if you look at buying one head and one trigger, the Pro Photo is most expensive because of that really high priced Air Remote. If we're looking strictly at value, I think it's undeniably the 8600 Pro. And that's because despite its low price, it is really competing with these other two lights in all categories. So in conclusion, I can't make a conclusion. I can't peg any one of these three lights as the best. Each of these lights wins in different categories. If you value output, the Bron Color Cirrus is the best option. The controller simplicity or the focusable modifiers might have you choose the Pro Photo. Or if you're just looking for overall capability but don't want to spend a ton of money, then the 8600 Pro is going to be your best option. It all depends on what you're looking for. All I hope is that I've been thorough enough in analyzing these lights that you can now make a more informed decision. So I hope this video helped you out guys. Please, if it did in any way, hit that like button. Let me know so other viewers get this video popped up and it can help them and we can just start this chain of helping the world. That's really cheesy. If you're considering buying one of these, I've got links to each of the three lights in the description below. Comment below with any questions. If you need a place to talk shop with me and thousands of other photographers, you can join my photography gear chat group on Facebook, also linked in the description below. Also, if you enjoyed, hit that subscribe button so that you can see more awesome videos on photography gear and lighting equipment. I'll see you guys later. Keep on shooting, YouTube.